Behind the scenes in the control room at King Street Studio in San Francisco on the Buddy Rich shoot. This is Ken Rasek. He's running the boards. He's the last word in audio on this shoot. And he's going to take us through the chain of command, how all the channels get funneled into this and come through that and, and actually give us surround sound in the end. What happens? I mean, how many channels are you using and what's the first step? Well, we're actually using 22 channels. Mm -hmm. Uh, the heart of the whole mix is uh, based on an array of microphones, two microphones that are standing on top of the band mm -hmm. under big, two rather large plastic structures that were arranged by Vince Motel. That's picking up the big band as a group. Then we have drum mics, we have a bass, and we have uh, four solo mics that are within the mix too. And, and they're effects. Off on these pots here on they're the coming on all the pots here. We're also doing this mix without any limiting in any way, too, which is sort of like a different item. Uh, I'm used to working without limiters, so it doesn't bother me a bit. Mm -hmm. But most people like to use them as a protective device. And when you're doing a live big band like this, it should be as straight as possible. Mm -hmm. And I think it's working out real, real well. In fact, mm -hmm. I'm fairly happy. Well, once, it, once you have all of these channels coming in through the board and you're controlling mm -hmm. them through these potentiometers, what next? What's the next step? Okay, from that control, we then come to con well to concept as far as in what we're trying to get out of the sound. Uh -huh. Basically, in this shoot, we're trying to get a, a surround stereotype sound where the band is in front, sort of getting closer to the sides, but not hitting the back in any way. Mm -hmm. And then a true back sound of ambience with the crowd and also an echo effect that we're adding to in order to give it just a nice warm slap sound mm -hmm. so that the band sounds like it's really in movement, mm -hmm. which it is definitely through this project. Well, how do you do that? I mean, is, is this what you were telling me about before, the encoding device? Yes, we're using a, a CBS encoder. It's a, a modified unit, and we're able to position various sections or instruments or separate instruments into a 360-degree curve. And in this group, we are putting most of it up front as far as into a total left-right uh, status. Mm -hmm. And then we're bending separate channels so that it just sort of goes outside of the mix a little bit, mm -hmm. so that it just has a little bit more dimension. So it feels like it's curving around? Right, here? curving around and sort of like a semicircle, mm -hmm. but not in a real hard one that would sort of throw you from being a member of the audience. It's a very natural thing that we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And then, through these two potentiometers, we're uh, uh, bending it to the far left and right back. Now, when we're doing this, what we're actually doing is throwing part of the sound out of phase. Uh, it's like the SQ process is a 90 degree phase shift. 90 degrees was set up because it's a very normal way of hearing depth as far as in a two channel system. You don't need a uh, surround stereo unit in order to hear the full benefits of this. If you have a pair of open-air headphones, mm -hmm. you're able to hear a front-back relationship. If you have speakers that have very excellent imaging, you will hear, like in this tape, you'll hear the drum kit come sort of towards the back. You have to make sure that as creative as you can get in the surround stereo thing, you might lose those instruments in, in monophonic sound, which you have to always think 50% of the people that are listening to it, at least, have that kind of a unit. Right. So you have to make sure that they are not uh, losing any of the program that you're trying to put in. Now, you've explained what happens on your end, your control and positioning, the, the spatial arrangement of all of the channels. Mm -hmm. But if you are listening to the system or to uh, software which is encoded with this, what is the maximum benefit you can get if you're a consumer? How does that work? As a consumer, let's say if you are listening to open air headphones, let's say uh, normal ones that you use with your Walkman type okay. tape recorder or tape cassette player, uh, you will hear a front to rear thing happening that will be very natural and it'll just sound like you don't even have headphones on your head. It's, it's just a really amazing thing that happens, and it sounds very good. What do you need to get that? Uh, no extra equipment except your open-air headphones, which you probably already own. Right. But what about what And about you can this? record this process on any device, any tape device, as long as it's a stereo tape player, and be able to record this whole process, and it won't get changed. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't call for any special equipment at all. It's just that we have to encode it on the original production for it to happen. Great.